Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture with a thought process. Basically, it is not possible for any human being to harm others without hurting himself. That means, if you want to hurt anybody, you will have to hurt yourself first. That we must understand. So, uh, of course, that is the thing I felt myself. And um, let us now recall what we learned in the last lecture. And if you look at, we started with uh, basically uh, what you call like how our ancestors were doing science using the basic principle innate to the human being that is like your Anumana, Pramana and then uh, Artha, Arthapati and other things. <coughs> and uh, later on we looked at uh, like about uh, how our ancestors uh, very good in mathematics and giving importance to the mathematics and also how they have really uh, expressed the mathematics in a very poetic and also very uh, what you call um, cryptic way. And later on we looked at the physics, how they were having that and then some of the physics uh, I have already discussed, but we will be discussing little more what it is like your optics. If you look at, they have uh, told that, you know, that optics wise, aprapya grahanam kaya, bhrapatala spatikanta ritoplavde. That is the basically that which cannot be perceived by naked eye, can be perceived with a glass or mica or a crystal. Right? So, this is the things uh, they have uh, talked about. And beside this, uh, basically these uh, things I have taken from Naya Darsana, Adhya 3 and Sutram by Kanada, it is something 800 BC. And he also says that multicolor rays of the sun being dispersed by a wind in a cloudy sky are seen in the form of rainbow. All of you might have observed the rainbow. I am afraid some of you may not because you people do not have time to watch the sky. But uh, I had a very great experience. I always like to watch this rainbow, particularly in the when there is a rain and then there is a sun together, you know, I always enjoyed of doing that. So, that is being of course, uh, our ancestors might have observed and they have talked about it very clearly. So, uh, if you look at earth and its rotation and gravity is being talked about uh, even uh, like around uh, 500. C that is common era and before that it was there, but he has Aryavarta has put into together assembled and then edited the earlier thing and put in Gitika Pada. Aryavarta believes that earth rotates about its axis and stars are fixed in space. The period of one sidereal rotation basically it is a yearly right and this is a Latin word and then uh, kind of things. So, rotation of the earth is 23 hours 56 minutes and 4.1 second that was the prediction. And corresponding to modern values it is almost same that is 23 hours 56 minutes 4.091 second. So, so accurately they could predict at that time. It is mind boggling what they were using, how they were doing you know it is a thing to be pondered about and also explored. So, that we can relearn and then do that. But how to do is a one you know million dollar question. <laughs> so, has to be looked at because we do not know that. And similarly, the deity that is earth, uh, keep in mind that the, the in a, our ancestors were right, talking in different language than what we think of. Deity, deity means basically we think God, but the earth itself is a God, you know they consider. By favoring, attracting, controlling by pulling down the vital function called apana of the human. See, 
and um, in other words else the body would fall due to its weight or the would fly into sky if left free. But this word if you look at if you get into those details you will find these are all different things. But now interpretation and whether to map into that era is a very challenging job. And this uh, being taken by the Sankara's commentary the last portion of on the Prashan Upanishad in the Vedic period. Actually uh, just now I was telling to you uh, on an informal chat that uh, Adi Sankara has given commentary. Tika means basically commentary uh, in Prashan Upanishad which is during Vedic time. So, in physics uh, you know like speed of light is very important in this loka which is taken from the Rig Veda Sanhita and of course, Mandalam, Suktam is given 50 and Mantras 4 that Tathacha uh, Smariyata Yojanang Sasrang Dve Dve Sate Dvecha Jojane Ekena Nimisardham Kramanam Namastute Te. See actually this Namaskar you know like posted kind of thing is all together this is a little high one has to interpret. So, it is remembered that salutation to the sun travels with 2202 yojanas is half nimisa, a one nimisa is 0 0.1143 second in modern time. And if you just calculate that one yojana is 14.269 kilometer, of course, there might be little reservation about that, there is a controversy also, one has to look at it. But if you consider that, 2200 yojana is a basically uh, 32213.06 kilometer that means 32213.06 kilometer and if you uh, divide this 32213.06 divided by 0 0.1143 that is one uh, half nimisa right you will get something 281829.03 kilometer per second and uh, modern speed of light is basically the 299792 kilometer per second right so uh, if you look at it, it is approximately similar right so uh, let us look at the chemistry chemistry of course uh, you know it's a uh, very old but uh, people have uh, looked at you know also lot of ancient scriptures is there like uh, Rasayana Shastra, Rasa Shastra, Rasa Bada, Rasa Prakriya in Sanskrit, you know these are the uh, chemistry and the language of ancient India. Let me tell you that uh, during this uh, independence, just before the independence there is a uh, P. C. Roy, he has written the Hindu chemistry, you can look at that, it is a beautiful book in English, you can look at that and chemistry is uh, actually is not that what we study uh, remain in the abstract form, but it was very profound in you know in application like in the distillation of perfumes, aromatic liquids, manufacturing of dyes and pigments like you know we are very good in textile I will be discussing about later on, for there you need to have used dyes and pigments you might be have gone to Ajanta and Elora. Some of you have gone Ajanta and Elora? You should see the paintings which is very old, there you need dyes. Okay. So, those are still existing today, so many years the weather condition is changing you know like it is all but still it is existing. But today modern paints you would use it just vanishes within maybe 5 years or 3 years or, four, or sometimes earlier also. So, what things they were doing? These are all chemistry stuff. So, a lot of things we need to look at it. And not only the chemistry, but the fine arts, you know, were very much because if you look at Vedas were recited and recitation has to be correct, you know, it is very important to be because we call it Ved party, a person who can learn. And I am afraid that very few Ved parties are there in the country where Veda was originated. I am trying to such a person who will teach me, but I am not getting, you know, in Kanpur. And which was the people say this is the place where you know northern region where the Veda was originated, and people are saying, but today we don't have. And which gave rise to the finer study of sound and phonetics. Sound is a very important, so also the phonetics. And we don't care today about pronunciation. And uh, the natural corollary were emergence of music. Uh, in you know, if you look at 
Indian musics are varieties and also it is quite profound in its depth and rigor, other forms of performing arts, right. So, uh, art was a thing and if you look at mechanical and production technology, if you go to the Arthasastras and also the Greek historians, they have actually talked about how uh, you know our people were doing smelting of metals and then processing and then you know like we will be talking about that little later on that is about uh, metal and minings and then metal works and uh, how they were uh, you know distillations of the zinc and other things we will be talking about. And it goes back to the uh, 400 uh, you know BC before common era right. So, uh, if you look at civil engineering architecture and uh, we have already discussed about Mahinjad and Arapa which was something around uh, you know uh, accepted uh, by all people is 3500 BC but recently it has dated back to the 6000 BC which is one of the oldest rather the oldest civilization and which blossomed to highly precise science of in civil engineering and architecture. I will be discussing about that when I will be discussing about town planning and found expression in innumerable monuments of the ancient India right. We are having uh, some of the monuments although a lot of being destroyed because of foreign invasions for uh, thousand years. So, therefore, still we are having which is mind boggling which is some of the wonders of world. So, uh, let us look at it is not only the about architectures and production or the arts or the chemistry it is also games they were also doing lot of games right. Uh, so, let us look at this if you look at this game is what you call any idea snake and was it originated in India? It was ok and this was not snake and ladder, this is a dharmapatha, the game name was dharmapatha means you take the right path, if you take the right you know path, right you know things, if you do carry out right things right dharma, dharma is basically the which is uh, innate in your things, jadharayati dharma that means dharma of a man and rather ethical ethics proper rules regulation other thing then you will go up otherwise you will go down right go up and down ladder is basically right path if you take then again if you take a wrong path then you will be going coming down and that is the spirituality even in the game they put in spiritual into it ok. So, uh, let us look at uh, this uh, game right what do you call this game what do you call like you know uh, there will be boxes you will have to go from here and then pass through that. I think it is chopper, chopper, chopper right. Yeah. This is known as Pachisi and this game is across the world in North America it is also known as Pachisi right, Parchisi they call. But it is commonly known as Ludo, but we do not know it was ordinary if you ask people they do not know it was originated in India. Let me tell you uh, there is a lot of evidence that and I was told that evidence is there in Ajanta and Elora. If some of you visit find it out, I have not visited ok. I feel of going <laughs> to see and Akbar the Mughal king was very fond of this Pachisi I was told. So, uh, I mean like this was all originated we do not know we are modern that is why we do not know that it was there our people have devised it. And uh, what is this game? These are the point and then uh, huh? what do you call? This is chopat. What is chopat? Huh? Solite? No. This is chaturanga. What is being used in Mahabharata? Sakuni, yes. right? He was using this pasa, this portion, he was uh, you know misusing it rather and that technique he got that is the being in our Mahabharata. Now, this game was converted into chess, chess and that is and this is this I have given you some example there might be several others are there and all lost and all uh, renamed you know we do not know. So, therefore, we need to look at it we need to also communicate to our youngsters the look 
these are the things and people have accepted, not that I am telling you will accept it, okay. We do not know and if I, and that is should be a part of education as well. So, if you look at the ancient India is the birthplace of several games like chase, ludo, snake and ladder, playing cards, cards also and several others which we are not aware. So, therefore, and it is not only about the games, I just now move into sea building and navigation. If you see the uh, Sanskrit and then Pali, I guess in Tamil it will be there, okay, because Tamil is one of the oldest language of India. So, I have several reference to maritime activity by ancient Indians, particularly the coastal area, you know. You go back to Harappan time, I told you that Harappan time we are having dockyard, maybe I will show you when I am talking about town planning, okay. So, and it will be definitely there, but those, those things has to be looked at it and re-established that and of course, there is a lot of evidence in uh, coastal India that we are having because uh, you know kind of thing. So, if you look at that uh, in ancient India, we are having these are the routes which is being followed and so also here in Gujarat, this is the silk uh, road what was having in the land and people are having from Ganges moving over here and then going through that and uh, these are the coastal areas of different places, you know the sports, Th these are all old names, Meliji, Gara, like all those names today you may not be knowing and there is a uh, several materials are going like iron, steel, cloth, if you look at uh, spices, right, all those things we are exporting. We are the, you know, let me tell you that uh, if you read the Abdul Kalam's book, you know, you will see he has written that we are having uh, something around 1800, 24 percent of the world GDP was with us before British us, okay. We are a very rich country, not a, not a underdeveloped country as of now, <laughs> okay. We are very rich and today also we are rich, let me tell you rich in natural resources, rich in our uh, what you call fertile land. I have already discussed that uh, earlier, that what we need to do is that we need to relook at it and consolidate ourselves, so that it will be a very good country. It will be a rich country and it will be having lot of potential to contribute, not only in the science and technology and also other areas, because we are intellectuals sound great, but today our youth are in different direction. If they will be coming forward and we are having youth power and if they will be directed properly, educated properly, I am sure that we will do wonders and give direction not only for our country upliftment, for others as well. So, we need to learn from this lecture that we need to relook at ourselves and integrated with our culture and heritage, whichever is good we should accept, we should learn and which is a bad we need to skip aside and go ahead. So, if you look at ancient Indian medicine, it is basically Ayur means life, Ayurveda basically, Veda means knowledge, about knowledge about the life, about the human being and also the animals and it is one of the oldest known medical system in the world goes back to 6000 BC you can think of, 5000 to 6000 BC and India's about uh, disease and ailments and their symptoms and how to cure them and if you look at it is a beautiful system, people have understood and then that is more integrated with the nature than the modern medicine what we are having. That is of course, my personal belief and you can experience that and try to understand the tenets, the basic principles of that and then try to you know profess it, that to use it and then get into you will feel that way. And a lot of also research in modern time have proved that it is a quite a bit good thing to have that. And we need to also research and further the knowledge to the betterment. So, India was the first to have hospitals for both man and animals, it is not only the man only. So, <coughs> And surgery was conducted in ancient India and if you look at surgery was considered to be originated in India by Susutra. 
uh, this thing and there is a lot of 125 surgical instrument. I have shown you few of them here. It is not that nothing was there and surgery is a new thing. Uh, it is a part of Ayurveda, this is known as Sallas Chikista. And you can look at this book, Susu Sanita, which is English translation based on original Sanskrit, of course. And uh, this is, you can see and read it and also feel good about it and use it. So, we need to have a house, we do housing, right? Yes or no? And we use concrete, isn't it? These are, if you look at, these are concretes and cements, these are your iron rods for reinforcing, reinforced concrete and we will have a flat roof, okay? Yes or no? Right? And we use a lot of iron and as a result, we will produce a lot of pollution also and we take out the metal from the earth and we also, uh, you know, cut the mountains and make get gravels and then we use it. And if we are having 130 crore people and if everybody wants to have a, this kind of house, then where will go? And this house life is around something, what is the lifespan of this kind of houses? Any idea? Maybe around 50 to 60 years kind of things. Then after 56 years, again I will have to go and cut the thing, get the iron and other thing. So, is it possible that we will afford to give this kind of houses to all the people? But everybody wants to have that. Is there any other way of doing it? So, can you make a roof of a house without concrete and iron rod? Of course, you will have to go back and then this thing that the beam, you know, earlier days we used to give wooden beam. You might have seen in olden house. I had seen in my house we are having wooden beam, right? And then uh, strips will be given, right? But let us say we do not want to give, where is the wood? Because jungles are not there. <laughs> All the human beings are being filled with the land of India, right? 130 crore people. So, is there any other way of doing it? Any idea? So, let me tell you, I visited this place. This is a place in uh, Kanpur, right? And this is a Sivrajpur temple in Kanpur. And this is the roof of a house, which is located just on the side of river Ganga, okay. And that is maybe 300, 400 years or more than that, I do not know, I have not dated it. But if you look at these are the bricks and then chuna, chuna means lime and sand, you can make that and it is so strong, last year, nobody is, is lying there, is there and nobody is taking care of it. <laughs> And it is on the bank of Ganga, subjected to water, rain and uh, what not and then, uh, you know, force of the Ganga, water of the Ganga during uh, what you call rainy seasons, flood. Now, it is a doable, but I do not know the technology, right. So, therefore, we need to relook at it, the, it is important to look at the science in ancient time and use it today. Let us uh, look at the view of few scholars and you must be knowing uh, Heisenberg, German physicist who says that after the convergences about Indian philosophy, some of the ideas of quantum physics that had seemed so crazy suddenly made much more sense. It is the Heisenberg who is saying, not me. That means, you know, we need to look at our own you know, Indian philosophy. How many of you are aware? We should, at least, if not all of you, some of you should take interest, okay. So, similarly, Rele, uh, who is the Jewish writer, who says, our present knowledge of the nervous system fits in so accurately with the internal description of the human body given in the Vedas, something 5000 years ago, what he claimed says, then the question arises whether the Vedas really religious books or books on anatomy of the nervous system or medicine. But let me tell you, we have not aware what is there and they are saying, we should know. 
with this i'll stop over thank you very much